Hello everyone, and welcome to another set of Zero K matches. Starting out with another lobster pot, because I got asked to. That's the only reason I do lobster pots. They're okay. They're interesting. I mean, I, I don't mind doing them. I just am not going to be likely to just volunteer to do them myself. But feel free to ask. I will probably do them. Anyhow, we are on Folsom Dam Deluxe, a map with a lot of water to the north, and a dam. And it's not a lot of water to the south. So northern side, we are seeing a couple of amphibots coming out from west. East team going a little more straight into the water. Ships coming out from Blank Mind. Otherwise, Amphot Factory all along the north coast. Which makes sense. Center, we're looking at mainly vehicles going on each side. Rover suffers on one side, rover tanks on the eastern side. And south of that, bots. Actually, pots and some tanks. Not unexpected. Though I'm curious if this is going to work out with the... Already, already we have quite a bit of engagement over to the northern side of the map. Fair bit on the center as well, but the center is pretty well held by the western team. The eastern team is not contesting it notably. On the other hand, the archers from the eastern team are causing some significant problems. I was hearing some complaints about their sonar, uh, sonic weapon being way too powerful, and that may very well be the case. Oh, wow, I... Yeah, yeah, that's a that's a thing. They just completely wreck face when it comes to the locusts. Because why not? Also, I realize you might not be able to hear see what's going on there. Hang on. Oops. There we go. That should be a lot clearer. See what's going on. Unfortunately, the standard default water doesn't always have the most have the clearest view underwater. So that's why we have other forms of water, which do have clearer views underwater. Anyhow, engage them over to the southern side of the map. Western team overall slight lead economically, but not really that significant, all things considered. Oh. Double air factory. Going for crane on the eastern side. Not really sure what that's doing other than just building up a massive amount of power infrastructure. But hey, it's never bad to have a bunch of constructors. Just to reclaim, build energy as needed, all that stuff. All that good stuff. And considering the eastern team is doing a great job militarily on the northern side of the map, this is looking promising. I mean... Trains set up here are, ooh, taking some losses, but still overall in reasonably good condition. Rather timely defense coming in there from the air players on Eastern team. But the Western team is still winning out on the metal income, even though the northern side of the map is firmly in the grasp of the Eastern team. The southern side of the map, a little more contested, most... This bit actually looks like it is being handled by the Eastern Team as well. Yeah, Trepak as one of them. There are, of course, for Lob Sprouts, I will not name the players, because it's just, by the time I've done that, most of the game is over. So, I might name them throughout. It's just, Lob Sprouts are weird. As Driscalius in chat points out, the best map in the game, Folsom Dam Deluxe. This is one of the old, this is definitely one of the oldest maps in the game. Probably predate zero K. I don't remember a time when it didn't exist, so it is old. But it is also a map that has actually I'd say probably one of the better potentials for large team games like this. As we can see, we do have a lot in the way of variety of factories, a lot in the way of variety of tactics, or well, okay, mainly due to the factories. But it is working out or ooh. Midnight television in a bit of an awkward position. They do What in the world do they have on hand? Machine gun. Oh, just an okay. D gun and machine gun, that's about it. At the same time, we do have West Wing actually pushing back. A couple of Nemesis coming here along with Majo's Lance. 
should be actually able to ooh, take out one of the razors. That's that is huge. The Nemesis still have to worry about the archers, but with the razor gone, the Western team should be able to start taking this back. Over the center of the map, there is a map pretty well full control by the Eastern team. South side of the map, shield wall for the Eastern team, and not a whole lot of territory control by either team. Do have a Western team snitch just waiting. The outlaws will be able to stop that before it becomes a problem, though. Same time, Eastern team actually managing a stalemate. Where's the reclaim, though? Why no reclaim? This is so much reclaim here that the Eastern team can take. Well, I mean, three, just Southern, 3.3k metal, and none of it is being taken. I do not understand what is going on here. Snitch, I'm making a little uses to the south side. That leaves it relatively open for the Eastern team, though they aren't going for it. Pretty clear here that Dark Jeff is waiting until some something. Not well, waiting until right now. Decides to go for it. Really no opposition. The south side of the map is basically open. There's a couple Gauss turrets and a Stinger, and that's it. Even under the cloak field, there is nothing of major concern. And north side of the map, Sila is up. Oh, right. This is why... Sila is why I got the request for this game. Because they're like, hey, you want a good game with a Scylla in it? Here, have a game with a Scylla, or Scylla. Or, yeah, have a game with a Scylla in it. I'm like, oh, cool. Good old TAC nuke submarine. And up it goes. Yeah, this is actually pretty, oh. Oh, oh, that is huge. Got rid of basically everything that was over in the north, in the western side of the center of the map. Firework should be able to keep pressure on that while the rest of the team gets rid of the commander, gets rid of some additional builders. I mean, the Scylla is going to still be able to start taking out tactical or areas, weapons of tactical importance, areas of tactical importance on this side of the map. Ooh, commander gets pulled out of the way just in time. Same time on the south side of the map, the eastern team is continuing their push. They have taken it over. The south side of the map belongs to the eastern team. Temps coming in here from an ultimatum to try to stop that are completely stuffed. And that looks to be it for the south side of the map. The north side of the map is still contested. The still providing a lot of firepower, though. And there it goes again. Up and... Ooh. Nicely done. Taking care of Musa Luz's commander. That takes out 10 metal per second to the factory. Cutting the production time in... Or production speed in half. That will help... That will help quite a lot, actually. Because that has been a major defensive force for the south north side water. So having lost that production capacity, the eastern team should be able to overrun whatever is left on the western side. Scalp's trying to come in here to work as a bit of a force multiplier, but unfortunately, they're just not going to be able to really work against the Sirens all that well. Not to mention, they are dealing with their own number on the other side. This will not last long. That is... Yeah, Major pointing out the sea is lost. North side's gone. South side's gone. The Eastern team is basically taking it all over. The center, however, has been taken back. The Western team, Malark in particular, pushing... The center, pushing the dam control basically to the center. But hope is faint. Western team losing one of their factories here. Thanks to Scylla. Looks like we might be seeing another factory. Are we going to see the F-Bot factory go down as well? No. Instead, it looks like... What factory was that? Oh, no. It's just caretakers. Caretakers for an F-Bot factory that was not producing anything. So not the most useful use of that particular unit, but it's still still damage. If that factory wanted to build something, it will have a hard time doing that. And I agree with that note, win south or lose because that is, actually even that's not likely. Most of the team knows that most of the team is voting to resign. 
It's gonna be it. Looks like not quite. The center, the center is holding, though much, much less convincingly than it would really have to in order for this to work. And I, yeah, Malric, they're being heroic right now. Not sure how well it's gonna work with the big birth that raining down on them, but you know, heroism is its own reward. Actually, if Nemesis coming in here may make that heroism worth it. Midnight Television forced to retreat. All of Tripac's forces are still in reasonably okay shape, but half a dozen Nemesis bearing down on you is a lot. Still, the resigned vote continues to come in. North side is gone. The south side may be re retaken. Looking unclear. It's looking very unclear. Are we going to see anything? Tripak coming in here takes out. Few of the enemies, but not enough. Mostly, there's just Likos coming in here from the western side. Tripak's commander down. Actually, most of Trevax's forces down. The south side could be retaken. There is nothing defending this. The south side is going to go back to the western team. And the eastern team, they are 40 metal ahead. They are 40,000 metal ahead in terms of damage. Disco Rape already... Ah, that won't be up and done. Half an hour? No, this, this game will probably be decided before then. Especially as the center has started to fall. And, of course, the north side is in very bad shape. But it's hard to tell. Oh yeah, Dreskali is pointing out the lack of Claymore spam in the north. I actually am not surprised. Claymore used to be kind of useless. I mean, it was suicide. it was basically a self-destruct unit. I mean, it has been buffed recently. The current version of Claymore is actually really good. But I don't expect for changes in actual effectiveness of units to be reflected in how much they're used in especially large team games for several months. And I think that buff happened only one or two months ago. So, I I mean, it'd be cool to see Claymores. That would be that would be awesome. I just expect that won't happen for a while in large team games. The meta just as far as I can tell, I mean, granted, my knowledge is pretty limited, so correct me if I'm wrong, but from what I can tell, the meta for large team games moves very slowly. Like, months might actually even be a generous estimate. I mean, sooner or later, yeah, someone will probably use Claymores, but for the time being, I don't know. It'd be cool if we saw that. I always like Claymores. <laughs> okay, Dreskali is pointing out again, they don't think this is a team game meta. Like, fair enough, but I do think there are certain units that people kind of gravitate to in team games. There's maybe not team game meta, but there's certainly team game habits. Ooh. I didn't even notice the Shogun being built up there. But yeah, there's certainly team game habits, and team game habits take a while to change. So meta or not, players players get stuck in a particular way of playing. And I can't say I'm surprised. I've played some large team games. They're intimidating. There's a lot going on, and not a whole lot you can easily pay attention to at any one time. So I can totally understand why people would stick to their habits. It just means that changes like unit buffs and such don't get reflected that quickly in use. Although at the same time, that may not matter because old habits, like throwing a nuke into your opponent's face, can still do something. I don't think it's going to win or anything. I mean, it's kind of... That's actually kind of surprising. Was, was there no anti-nukes? There were no anti-nukes. I mean, obviously there weren't because otherwise there would have been antis coming up to stop that nuke, but yeah, that was just nuke coming in there. Well, that's how it goes, I suppose. And he got blown up. Yeah. I am honestly, I like I said, this is... I, normally when I see large team games, there is at least an anti-nuke or two by that point in the game, but no, that didn't happen. So that was that. We had a Scylla. That was the entire point of this game. The entire point of casting this game was the Scylla built to the north. And we saw it. It was there. It did a fair bit of damage. I don't know that it won the game. I feel like the game was just won off the opening archers, and then everything else after the opening archers was basically supporting that initial win, but it didn't hurt.
Anyhow, that was that was the Crazy Lobster Pod game for today. Next up, we're going to have a much more normal game. It is going to be a game between Saniac and The Warning. Because why not? The Warning was playing quite well last time. Be curious to see how they do against Saniac. And it'll be on Doom Patrol Redux, a map that I'm not the biggest fan of, but isn't terrible. I just find it's kind of awkward. If you're really comfy with Hovercraft, it's a great map, but I'm not so comfy with Hover, so I don't like it as much. Anyhow, be back with that shortly, so stay tuned. <laughs>